I'm Rob Schuster, and this is my entry for the 2022 Gatton CNC Christmas Challenge. For this project, I'm using VCarve Pro. It'll be a tray, and this part will be cut out. I'm going to use a roundover bit, or a bowl bit, actually, that'll put around here, and I'll do a, a V roundover on the top so it'll have a rounded edge both sides. So I'm going to slowly add in the colors to show what I'm doing. Here's the light strand, we'll hold lights. So this will be black epoxy filled. Then I'll have red. I'll fill that, cut that out, fill it in with red epoxy. White epoxy, green, yellow, just a bit of yellow, and blue. I was gonna add the noses to the separate pieces. I'm not gonna do that now, so I don't think. We'll see later. So that right there is basically all the parts I'm doing. And if we go over and look at the tool paths, you can see I've got like the red round, the red tool path, the white tool path, whatnot. So let's go ahead and go and look at the 3D, what this is gonna look like. I'm just gonna let it run the whole darn thing at once. So first it's gonna do the round over edges and carve the pocket that will ever fit inside. Black, the red, all the different colors. So that's what I'm going for. I'll clean it up a little bit and get rid of these pieces. The actual depths are a little different. This is a demo piece because the depths, it doesn't look right when you have the true depths, you don't lose the colors for that. But that's the goal I'm looking for. Let's set up the CNC and see how this works out. The first step is just to hog out all the wood in the middle and make a nice dish shape. From here, I decided to coat the entire bowl with polyurethane. A couple reasons for this. The main reason is to seal it. I don't want any of the colors from the pigments or the epoxy to flow through. And second of all, it makes it a little bit stronger so it won't chip out as much when I'm doing the V carving. I'm using my touch plate to set the depth on the V-bit here. It's important to be very consistent with that. If you're doing multiple V-cuts and one is deeper than the other one, your shapes won't be consistent. So that's why I'm doing that step. Now I'm doing the tool path that will be the first one to be filled with epoxy. This one will be the black coloring, which is the strand of lights. The depth is 0.1 inches deep. There is a specific order I want to use for cutting these tool paths. Black is the first one and eventually there'll be lights cut into the black later. One of the secrets of epoxy inlays is to overlap your colors. If you don't overlap your colors, there's a good chance you'll have a thin strip of wood showing between your colors and that just doesn't look right. Here's a quick still shot of the tool path that we'll use to fill with black. It's time to mix the epoxy. It's pretty basic. There's two parts, A and B, and you mix equal parts between the two. I use a little digital scale that turns out are pretty inexpensive and incredibly accurate. Now we've mixed equal parts of the epoxy mixtures, it's time to add the tint. I like using mica powders. One of the great things about mica powders is they'll give a swirl effect in the end. Though black like this won't show too much because it's black of course, but I really like these pigments. For this pour with a black epoxy, you can see I mixed just enough up. In fact, I'm scraping the sides to get it to fill the whole thing, and it looks like I have enough. But sadly, in the end, as it cures, it shrinks a little bit, and it wasn't enough. But through the magic of video editing, in the next shot, you can tell I magically have enough epoxy. Imagine that. Next step is to run the heat gun over it to pop any possible air bubbles. Now that we've done the black pour, and redone the black pour, it's time to work on the red. The first step will be to outline what we filled with a V-bit, and then after that's done, we will do a pocket with a end mill to get the rest of the carving out. The V-bit I'm using here is a 60 degree downcut Groovy Jenny. I really like these downcut V-bits because instead of the bit spinning and jerking out these bits of wood, it pushes down and it eliminates chipping. I get a much cleaner finish using these, so I can't recommend these high enough. I hope you'll forgive me for cutting out some of the scene seeing this, but it's just cutting out pockets and the dust is flying everywhere and there's no good way to do a video either with a dust collector on or vacuuming it up, so we're just going to cut some of the scene seeing out for now. 
as you can see, I routed out the pants, the hats, and a few of the light bulbs, and now I'm pouring some red epoxy in those spots. I'll run a toothpick around on the edges where the V-bit meets up to the flat surface. Sometimes air bubbles tend to hide there, so I'm trying to get rid of those. And then I'll add a little bit of a swirl. And then again, I'll use the heat gun to pop any small bubbles we have on top. I had some issues recording the carving out for the white pocket and pouring the white epoxy. So here's how it looks after that all is done. And once again, I'm using my down cut 60 degree V-bit for the final three colors. Since there's no overlapping, I can do them all at once. First I will do the green, and be very careful not to spill anywhere else, then the blue, again very carefully, and finally the purple. As you might know already, I live in Arizona, and my garage gets to the low 60s this time of year. Very pleasant compared to other areas, but still too cool to, for epoxy to cure. Epoxy likes to cure in the mid-70s, one of my other hobbies is brewing beer, and the best way to get a good fermentation is hold the beer at a constant controlled temperature, and this is how I've done it. That's a heating pad used to keep reptile cages at a nice comfortable mid-70s degree temperature. It turns out, keeping reptiles at a safe temperature also works great for fermenting beer and curing epoxy. Who knew? And here is a quick shot of the project after all the different colors of epoxy have been poured. Now for my favorite part of the video, skimming off the excess epoxy so we can now see the finished product. When I carved the pockets to pour the epoxy into, I actually set a little below the zero point, so when I skim this off, I'm skimming off a thin layer of wood too. It's hard to express how satisfying this is when you skim off this layer and realize it's going to turn out the way you wanted. And now for my favorite part of the video or at least my other favorite part of the video, applying finish and seeing the wood grain pop and how it's gonna look in the end. And now for a final few still shots or beauty shots of the serving tray. I just love how that white epoxy swirl came out on those beards. It looks beautiful and just like a swirly beard. Also the wood grain, I'm so happy with that too. And a picture of how it's going to look this week with cookies getting ready for Christmas and a fade away to the final version. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone.